I love the fact that there's egg white, and I also love the fact that we've sidestepped from the boy band chat to this. No, no, I'm going back <laughs> to the boy band. I'm back to the boy band. Donald Skeen. I'm, I'm so, here. I brought you here yes. to play this ridiculous game that we do called Sip, Savor, Spit. I am so excited about and this. And I'm going to give you three cocktails. So these are three variations on kind of classic sours. You pick one as your kind of sip drink, which is the one you'd be happy to have on a daily basis, whatever. It's nice. One as your savor, mm -hmm. which is like, that is so good. I'm crazy about it. I think it's fantastic. Okay. And one that is spit, okay. which is uh, I, Out. I'm I, done. Done, done, don't like it, <laughs> not my thing. The only hitch is you have to choose one of each. So what I thought I'd do first is a pretty cool cocktail called the Gold Rush. Okay. And it's it's pretty straightforward. It's bourbon um, and lemon juice. Lemon juice. And a honey syrup, which is about, uh, it's about two parts honey to one part water. Like, like a simple syrup. Like a simple with syrup honey. with honey. This drink works great with a simple wildflower honey. Okay. Um, so this is, this is the Gold Rush. Okay. You can tell me what you think. Um, you don't have to make a decision now, but which it is. You haven't had mm. the other drinks. I mean, see, this is. I mean, if I'm straight up with you, like yeah. this is my sort of cocktail. So this, right. like, if I go out for a drink and before we go for a dinner, this is a, a, a sour is my is this my is... choice. But this is gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, there's a lovely rounded flavor to it. I like the fact that it's a is that floral element of the sweetness rather than just like a simple syrup where it's just Are, straight sweetness. I'm also curious, like, um, your wife is not a cocktail drinker. No, she's much more of a wine drinker. Okay. So if, if, like I said, if we're going out for a meal, yeah, yeah. she will have her glass, a glass of wine or, or a bottle then we'll share, but okay. she's uh, she's definitely on the wine and I'll have, a, I'll have a cocktail. But you're both cider fans. Yes, we had, uh, for, our, for our wedding, rather than a champagne reception after the ceremony, we had a, we had a, a <laughs> we had a cider, cider reception. reception. Yeah. This, the, the drink is clearly hitting me straight away. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna move on to drink number two. Okay, <laughs> what are we talking? We're talking um, a drink called a Division Bell. It's a sour, it's an interesting sour. This is, um, I'm seeing a lot more ingredients, yeah, lot more ingredients than ingredients. you We got a little bit more ingredients going okay. on here. Um, it's a mezcal based drink. Okay. So we got mezcal, um, we've got lime juice, because you gotta have the sour of element. Of course, right? yeah. Aperol, like, adds a little bit of sweetness, adds a little bit of herbaceousness as well and um, maraschino liqueur. Oh, what was really the name of the cocktail again? It's called the Division Bell, the Division named after Bell. the Pink Floyd album of the same name. Of course, um, yes, because, one I listen to because, regularly. You know, because why not? And um, it served up. Um, I was wondering about the color. This, so that's coming from the Aperol, right? That's coming from the Aperol. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a wonderful cocktail. However, it's a mezcal cocktail. And if mm -hmm. you don't like that smoky mezcal thing, then, you know, it can be a little bit um, intense and then... Cheers. Cheers. Slancha. <laughs> so, yes. Um, that's probably the first time that's ever been said with this cocktail. We, yeah, <laughs> most likely. I don't think I've ever had this in Ireland anyway. Now that has... Wow. Smoke. Um, that is intense. <laughs> I mean, that's like, in terms of drinks, that's completely different to what we've just tried. Yeah. And almost like very far removed from what I would imagine as a as a sour it's base. Sour. I'm, I'm amazed by, this. is the smokiness purely from the mezcal? Purely from the mezcal. That's incredible. I mean, tell, we tell, did actually grind out a cigarette in your glass Because <laughs> it's got a bit of that going on. <laughs> yeah, we but, figure why not, what the hell. <laughs> yeah, give him that a, extra flavor. Yeah. But I, like, I'm amazed at just how smoky that is. Like, yeah. there's a depth that, that you I wouldn't have expected, but you're also getting that roundness from the Aperol as well. Yeah. Really it, interesting. It's interesting. It's, and then also, I, I mean, I, I kind of thought when we were talking about, you know, you're coming on the show, mm -hmm. and you're living in Los Angeles right now. Right. It, it feels a little sort of like, I, I don't know, it's a drink that was invented in New York, but it mm -hmm. vaguely feels West Coast to me. Yeah. I'm not sure what that reason is. Maybe it's the sort of sunset yeah. glow it's got going on mm -hmm. in the glass. <laughs> it's but got I, that California sunshine. I mean, I'm curious, you grew up in a small town in Ireland, yeah. right? Lived in Dublin for a while. Yep. You're now living in LA, which yeah. is massive. Unbelievably what, bigger. What's it, I mean, is it good? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I said, you know, uh, Ireland is, uh, you know, where I grew up was a very small town and to go to a city that has like 14 million people just blows my mind. Right. From a food point of view, it's a fantastic place. And it, and one that's kind of often misunderstood, I, I think, you know, a lot of people kind of go and end up in touristy spots, but actually the true kind of, I, I suppose the true heart of LA's food scene is in strip malls and, you know, slightly right. out of the city and not in the touristy de destination. So, I mean, that has been, since we moved there, that has been my my biggest mission is to kind of go out and explore these different ones and it's, it's it is it, i mean mezcal is one of those love it hate it it's, i mean it's what they say about like lefroigs okay know, whiskey you know people love it they hate it they're they're very few people who are kind of like eh, it's okay yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's a it's a marmite yeah the marmite it's of the marmite of, 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 of the alcohol of the world, world. Yeah. there you go and are you where do you land on marmite 
Oh, I'm a big lover. It's <laughs> come on. It's like dark. It's syrupy and it's salty and yeah, it's 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 an intense flavor. And I think you know, it's it, I put it up there with like fish sauce and oyster right. sauce and those like big punchy flavors. Um, but marmite, yeah, because it's it's but not really a thing but out but here in the states. Unlike fish sauce, you don't take toast and you pour fish salt on it. It's, <laughs> well, it's, you well, you never okay, know. That's true. And just for those of our viewing audience who don't know, what is Marmite? <laughs> You've asked the wrong man. I mean, Marmite is, uh, it's yeast-based, it's, it, uh, it's, it's salty. Yeast product? I, it's, it's this a... bizarre mystery jar of black goo. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could be it more is, uh, it is, detailed it is, than it is that. The, it is the black, it is the mystery ingredient that solves all problems. Exactly, it, yeah. it starts mornings, it uh, ends you, evenings. You can, you can <laughs> polish your shoes with it or you can eat it, you can do whatever you like. Exactly. <laughs> Very d distinctly different drinks here. Distinctly different so drinks. So I feel like it all and, lands on this last one. And we're one. also landing on one that you know you like. I do. Because we're gonna do a Pisco Sour. But um, key thing, you are a chef, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so um, I'm gonna enlist your aid with this one. Um, I'm going to, we, we need some egg white. So I have a my uh, my own um, not very uh, professional, <laughs> you know, a way of attempting to get the egg separated. Okay. But I would actually like to know how you go about separating an egg okay. correctly. Well, as you know, with this, there's like plenty of different takes on this. Right. But uh, my the way I do it is I crack it on a flat surface, specifically because if you cra crack it on a on a sharp or edge yeah. sur surface, there's more likelihood you're going to get shell in there. Right. Whereas you get like this little dimple here by cracking it on a flat surface, which allows you to just basically um, take it apart. Right. And then I just transfer between the two um, eggshells just to make sure that you get a nice amount of egg white and then the egg white, or sorry, the egg yolk separated. Right. Um, you can alternatively crack the whole thing into one bowl and then go in with your hands and then and transfer then, it. Um, and while I'm while I'm egg whiting our pisco sour and putting this, this silly thing together, um, which involves also pisco, of course. Of course. Um, lime juice and uh, simple syrup. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you were in a boy band. <laughs> <laughs> Every time my eyes will see photograph. I'm always so glad that this comes up. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it really is fun to bring up. I, I know. You know. People seem to get a kick out of yeah. bringing this up, but yes, I was, and very was, but, briefly. But, but not, I mean, not just like, this wasn't you like hanging out in the garage being in a band. This was a really successful band. Well, so the first the boy the boy band that I joined wasn't so successful, but the uh, the, the band that led on pre uh, after that was right. uh, was a little bit more successful. We okay. had we had uh, some number ones, and we had uh, we supported the Pussycat Dolls on tour, oh, really? which what? was our real highlight of our career. Um, but it was an amazing experience, and, and often like I get people kind of bringing it up as as a bit of a joke. But I had one of the best times of my life in that band. We performed in front of like sixteen thousand people. People sang back our songs. It was it was an amazing experience. Cheers. That is a classic good. drink. I mean, there's that a reason good. that's a classic drink. Um, I mean, I, I and I love the fact that there's egg white, and I also love the fact that we've sidestepped from the boy band chat to this. No, no, I'm going back <laughs> to the boy band. I'm back to the boy band. So, but I'm curious. What, I mean, it was a blast. It must. Have it was been. a blast. Yeah, but yeah. Did the cooking come first? Were you already mm. cooking when you were doing that? So funny enough, I literally, as we went on tour for our first single, I was editing my first cookbook. So it all coincided in this like I, I almost I always remember it as like a fork in the road because it was either going to be one or the other, um, and thankfully I I ended up going with what my true passion was because I love performing but right. cooking has always been the passion of, of, of mine and my grandmother was an amazing cook and my mom is a great cook so it, it was definitely passed down to me and you know like I said it was a fork in the road and I had just uh, just released the, say, the cookbook at the time where in true pop band experiences um, you you have a flash in the pan and and then it's all over so by the time the cookbook came out the band had finished and and I was catapulted towards uh, the food well, world. It's kind of perfect in a way because you don't have that long twilight years of 60, 40 years <laughs> Years of having a, having had one hit when you were 22 and this doing nothing it. else. No, yeah. instead I get to drink cocktails, on a, drink cocktails on, a, on a on a Wednesday yeah, afternoon. It's perfect. <laughs> um, so. This is, I mean, it is the egg white that makes mm. the drink on some level. Yeah, and I, uh, my most, I will send a drink back, or I send a pisco sour back if there's no egg white, because it's, yeah. it's the integral part of it. It gives body to the to the drink, and it yeah. gives a that lovely froth that is quintessential to the to the drink. So, pisco sour without an egg white is criminal in my in my view. But. <laughs> well, we, we commit no criminal acts. <laughs> exactly. Here. We we made the pisco sour with egg white because yeah. we know that that we don't want to be taken off to jail. Um, but you're, we're kind of reaching that point. We have to make a decision. Mm. Um, I mean, choose between these cocktails. It's very hard because obviously 
I, I absolutely love the Pisco Sour because yeah. it's it's literally my drink of choice. This is, right. you know, if I if I have to go out and I see it on a menu, I will. And in fact, even if it's not on a menu, I'll probably ask for it. So, but does that mean it's this? Does that mean that it's the savor drink that you love to death, to death, to death, or is it the sip drink that you would just happily have every single day? I it's mean, definitely not the. Sp I think we can say it's not the spit. It's not the one you it's reject. It's not this. It's definitely yeah. not the spit because I think that. Uh, oh, now I'm torn because. But <laughs> so if you look at what we've tried, you know the different elements of you know the, the smokiness and, and a complete departure in what what I right. view as a sour uh, sour cocktail uh, and something I would not necessarily have been uh, naturally drawn towards. Um, but I, I love. I am as I mentioned. I always love to try something new. This is an interesting one, and then this is you know more of what you know is, is a is kind of in the classic vein of like the whiskey sours and the you know obviously it's bourbon based but I I really like that but I mean that is definitely my saver I mean okay. I can't it, I can't it, but it not to be yeah. right yeah. so that pisco sour is my saver um, this is where I find it really difficult because on one hand you know by putting this in my uh, spit right. <laughs> hang on, does that sound weird? It sounds, sounds a little bit odd but we'll just run with it it's if I <laughs> choose this as my spit cocktail um, I, you know I feel like I'm letting down a, a, a an adventurous side right. so this is this, the saver this, this is, is the, the sip, sip and, and this is the spit. spit but only by an inch right. you know I, I really enjoyed like trying something new well we also I mean we shamelessly make you make a decision whether or not I, I know do, even if you like them all this which, is why I told kind of you like I don't like these game show things you know it's a it's a brutal harsh world and we force you to participate it, it in really it. is it's this has been the <laughs> toughest thing i've done all day <laughs> well good so one last thing to drink and this is not part of the sip saver spit this is mm -hmm. just for fun yes because you're irish i have no shame i'm going to make you drink <laughs> a fake irish stout except um so this is mckeller which is one of the great craft brewers probably in, in the entire country actually okay they're, they're based out in brooklyn um and they've come up with this it's brand new it's called a proper pint okay um, and what they did because they're basically you know insane beer people is um <laughs> They recreated the essentially the pH and the, and the character of Dublin water. Right. They, they went they went all out to make a an Irish you know a beer that tastes like it's Irish. And I think you know as an Irishman, the one missing ingredient that Guinness has around the world is that is that Irish element where you know it doesn't taste the same unless you're in Dublin. So yeah, that's that so, would be my theory. But this is very intriguing. So uh, they've literally gone and tested the pH they, values they of the water. Irish water. They <laughs> they've done everything they can to make a, a, a Brooklyn stout that is as Irish as it can possibly be. I'm intrigued. I'm um, intrigued. And so. Since you are, in fact, Irish. Yep. Um, Last time I checked, it's true. I, yep. That's what you told me you were. I mean, if, <laughs> it's if, believable. You know, if, if, if you're actually Scottish, now's the time to admit it. <laughs> no, I can promise you, I'm okay. all, all authentic. Cheers, but Such I figure you would know more than anyone else. Okay, well, let's give it a go. It's, it's interesting, because it, like, so, I, I smelt it before, I, before I, I drank it, and it definitely has those Guinness characteristics or Irish stout characteristics. Um, what's interesting as you taste it is there's much more of a sort of richer, chocolatier taste yep. that yep. like almost goes over and above that classic Irish stout. Okay. Um, but it's good. It's good. It, it is, is good. It's, actually, it's really good. Like, um, I, I have to be honest, like I'm not a huge um, stout drinker, but and I use it a lot in, in cooking, but that is... That's really drinkable and very like because I think sometimes with Irish stout, especially if you don't drink it that often, it can be quite like uh, it's so full body that it yep. feels too much. But I mean, that is a gorgeous that's drink. That's a good. That's a good beer. Yeah, a, that is a proper mm. point. Um, it. I, I will say, you know, stout's weird. People think of it as being high alcohol. Stout is not. Is not typically high no. alcohol. It's very. It's rich in flavor. But mm. It's not. Um, I mean, it's it's not Guinness, but it's. Pretty damn close, if I if I do say so. They're, they're doing something right. If they've got the yeah. Dublin pH levels, uh, <laughs> there, it there feels like home. It. Cheers, cheers to pH levels. Cheers to pH levels. <laughs> That's the strangest thing I've ever cheers for. <laughs>